Hearties, welcome to Creative Suite episode 19. I'm super excited. I'm back home in my office. I've, I've only been home four days this year so far, so it's great to be back in my office. We're doing a great tutorial this week. You'll just have to wait and see what it is. Uh, I've got some exciting news coming up, but before we do that, on my website, on my shop, I've uh, started putting some more stuff up there. Like I've recently just put up, you can buy my book. This is the InDesign Creative Suite 2 book. Just secretly, it's an absolute cracker of a book. That's my office back there, by the way, if you haven't seen it before. The InDesign CS2 book, as well as that, I think I might put up the uh, DVD, which I have for sale. This has got some great stuff. This is the best of InDesign CS2 book. DVD. It's got all about inline graphics, text anchors, color exchanging, layer comps, transparency, a whole bunch of stuff. But today's episode is an absolute ripper. Get into it. I really hope that you enjoy it. Welcome to this very first series, very first in a series of lessons we're going to use using this treasure map that we've drawn up inside of InDesign. We're going to do this over the next few episodes because there are some wonderful uh, lessons to be learned in building this document. It's going to cover some Illustrator stuff. It's going to cover some Photoshop stuff. It's going to cover some text editing and of course as well as InDesign and even PDF and we might even take this a little bit further to the print stage and PDF stage as well. Further down the track we'll see how we go. You can see over here we're going to learn things like uh, this feather. On the right hand side, for example, if I right click on that, it's a Photoshop document that's been placed. Rather, I've just deleted it. I right click on it and scroll to the bottom and say display high quality display. I'm just going to go ahead and click on that and it will render this in high resolution and you'll see that the mask that's been created is really quite a soft edge mask and it is blending to the background there. So a feathered edge, you could say. <laughs> boom, boom. Anyway, zoom back out. That's not what this lesson's about. There's going to be some white balance, deep etching, all sorts of stuff associated with this little guy here. We've got a, a map. We've got a grayscale colorized Photoshop document over the top of it. We're going to talk about all of those things. Bringing in vector artwork from Illustrator. It's been drawn in Illustrator. We're going to do that too. But for today, we're going to do a little bit of text. And one of my favorite tricks for selecting a font. Now, Illustrator CS2 introduced the ability to be able to see uh, under the font menu here a sample on the right hand side. But mine is gone. Where is your sample? I might hear you ask. Well, <laughs> And so might the doctor ask that too. But if I go to my preferences and type, you can see I have switched off my font preview size. What's that? I hear you ask. Why on earth would you do such a strange thing, Mike? Well, it is because when I select this font and choose this pop down menu, it makes the font list really long. It takes me ages to get to the font that I'm after. Sometimes I know exactly what font it is that I want. I don't need to look at that long, long list. I'm going to go back into my preferences and turn it off. There it goes. Press OK. If I'd like to be able to see uh, a sample font, well, here's the red hot tip for you. I'm going to zoom in here, uh, right in on my little treasure map text at the top here. And let's Control Plus or Apple Plus and just zoom right up on that. I'd like to see this in a number of different fonts. I don't really care much for the little sample. I'd actually like to see my heading in it. And yeah, I bet you that's what all you designers out there are saying. Well, I hope so anyway. Here's what I do. Instead of selecting the text this way, I simply select the text box and then the text tool without highlighting the text. This enables me to see my text in, a, in positive rather than negative. Now all I have to do is highlight the font, family, 
name at the top of top right of screen here zoom in and show you and then using my arrow keys on the keyboard simply arrow through my list of fonts and automatically it updates in a positive format and I can see just by using the down and up arrows and I can go down and go back up again on my keyboard until I get an appropriate font. Now if I don't know what I'm looking for I can just keep on a scrolling until I get to what I'm looking for. So we have a scripty type font. That's kind of nice, isn't it? I know the one that I'm after though. And believe me, I have got a lot of fonts in here. So instead of scrolling all the way to the font that I actually like, which I'm doing at the moment, I'm going to now highlight the field at the top. You see, I just click and drag over and then simply type in the first two letters of the font I like, SC. It's not quite it, so I use my arrow keys, arrow keys, so I'm into the S's now. I've got a little bit of a warning there for a font that's missing. Not schoolhouse, I don't want that, I want schooner script. And in Australia, if you're Australian, you'll know that a schooner is a large beer. So that is what we'd like. We will now select this schooner script and make the font much, much smaller. No, I don't think so. I think we better make it much bigger. I'll use my keyboard shortcut, command shift or control shift, greater than on the keyboard. And I can just keep tapping that. That will make my font bigger. And that is the type of font that a treasure map really needs. I can then move that into place. And of course, if I like to, everything on this page has got a drop shadow. So why not put another one on? That I ask you, why wouldn't you? Let's put an offset of one, two, and about five noise. And there we have it. We'll zoom back out. Control zero. The treasure map is starting to look pretty sweet. Oh, one last tip. If I'd like to scale this up and see what's going on by clicking and dragging, I hold control shift key down with the pointer tool and click and wait a moment and then drag and it will automatically update as you do it. If you don't wait a moment before you click and drag, it only shows you the box. That's a red hot tip. Pay attention. Next week, we've got more on the treasure map. So, aha, I hope you enjoyed that one. Hmm. Oh, huh, didn't see you there. Just uh, reading about San Francisco. It seems that I'm going on a little bit of a trip soon over to Adobe's headquarters in San Jose, which I'm told is somewhere near San Francisco. So that's in a couple of weeks time, the end of uh, Feb. So I'll be over there. That should be really great. Uh, drop me a, an email or something if you're in that area. Okay. Uh, oh, what was I going to tell you about? Oh, the sound. By the way, the sound, I've had a few people say, oh, the sound's not so great. So what I've done, I, I'm back in my office. I've got my proper microphone. I have been using one of these for those of you that's interested. This is a USB headset. Hang on, it's all in a bit of a tangle. A USB headset. And you can see it's got one of these little microphone-y things. You know, you put it on. I've just been sitting it on the desk. It's a USB, but it's not that great. So what I have got, this is my proper microphone, if you're interested. I've showed it on an earlier episode, but you'll hear some sound now. I'll just hold it up. This is the uh, blue microphone from, I've probably gone off the radar a bit there. The blue microphone, it's called a Snowball. It is a great USB microphone. It's a studio quality uh, thing. Comes with this great little stand. You sit it on the desk and there's a whole bunch of other sort of little accoutrements you can get with it. So hopefully the sound's much better. I can crank the volume a little bit more, but it might be deafening. So uh, I won't do that. Let us know. Give us some any feedback about the show uh, through my website. There's comments on there. If you'd like to see more about actually how the podcast is made, you could actually request that as well. I love to get feedback from people. I actually have no idea how many people are watching. I know there's quite a few hits on YouTube at the moment and I'm getting about 120 to 150 gig downloaded through iTunes a month. So there's a fair bit, I think. Who knows? I hope someone's watching anyway. Okay, thanks for another week and we'll see you next week with some more on the map. Oh, we might do a bit of an illustratory bit. Sounds good? Beauty.